Greetings. I'm Merle Fister. I'm a retired Air Force Colonel. I flew B-24 heavy bombers over Germany during World War II. Well, I had many Harry missions. I would like to relate to you my what I consider my Harriest. on June the 6th, 1944. Things went normal en route to the target. Our target was the Plessy oil fields in Romania. We had been there before and knew firsthand that this target was the most dangerous. In addition to 500 heavy guns, German fighter aircraft would try to prevent us from reaching our target. We encountered Messerschmitt 109s and Fokker 190. Although we had P-38 and P-51s for escort, Some fighters made it through and tried to knock us down. We were not hit and proceeded on to the target. As we approached the oil fields, the sky turned black with smoke from 88 and 108 millimeter shells bursting at our altitude of 21,000 feet. Before bombs away, we had a direct hit with the number three engine, which caught fire. Feathered the propeller, shut it down, and hit the fire extinguisher on that engine. The fire went out. We were, we were able to stay in formation and drop our bombs on target. heavy. Our plane was being riddled with chunks of metal. A three inch piece came through my pilot seat. It missed me by one inch. As we rolled off the target and headed for home, the German fighters came back and tried to knock us down again. But we were able to stay in tight formation with three engines with no difficulty and escape being hit. As we descended to a lower level, we asked the crew to check for damage and report. The flight engineer was first. He told us the hydraulic system was destroyed and we would have no brakes or flaps when we landed. The nose crew reported a flat nose tire wheel. Other reports were that we were full of holes but nothing that would affect our effort to keep us airborne. As we approached our wartime air base at Cerignola, Italy, we saw the punched steel plate runways and thought about landing without brakes or flaps. We elected to land last as we thought we might block the runway with a crash landing. And as we orbited around waiting for our turn, we lost number one engine. We feathered, shut it down, and headed towards the downwind lake. And because the airplane was almost out of fuel and with no bomb load, we could stay airborne with two engines. When it was our turn, we asked the crew chief to crank down the landing gear. He cranked and he cranked and he swept and he swore. And finally the main gear came down and locked.
The nose crew said that the nose gear was still up. We asked him to kick it down, which was successful. So we continued on the approach. We also told the waist gunners to tie their chutes to the waist gun mounts and toss them out and pull the rip cord as soon as we touched down. This would help us stop. As we turned on final approach, darned if we didn't lose another engine. But we still had one that was turning over real good and we were on our way down so we didn't think there would be any problem. We come on over the fence. Touched down, held the nose high, just as high as we could to get maximum braking power. The last engine quit as we rolled down the runway, and the parachutes went out, and we lowered the nose slowly as the air speed came down, ground speed came down and down and down. The nose wheel came on down and hit the ground and wobbled around a little bit, but we staggered on down the runway and kept it on the runway. It was a punch steel plate runway and it made a lot of noise. But we came to a stop. We got out. Everybody kissed the ground, went to debriefing. We officers went over to the officers club, had a beer, had a bite to eat, and turned in early because we knew that tomorrow we'd have to do the same thing over again with a different airplane because that one was burnt up and a different target. But that's the way it went, day after day, until we had flown 50 missions. At that time, whoopee, we were coming home, and we all came home unscathed. And that was my hairiest mission. <laughs>